Field Sports Team presents your Southern Tier Kickoff. Thank you once again for starting your Southern Tier kickoff this Saturday morning with us right here on 12 Sports and WVNG. Syracuse and Penn State both back in action on Saturday. Cornell and Colgate continuing conference play in the Ivies. And our CBS Game of the Day heads to the West Coast for the Big Ten's first trip to the Pacific. We have a jam-packed Saturday morning of Southern Tier sports for you. So not, let's not wait any longer and bring in and bring in the rest of the team. Kevin Quinn back at the desk once again. Joining him as always, Kyle Spizak. And 12 Sports is Michael Villegas and Keith Savage. Each will be joining us later on in the show. So, gentlemen, how are we doing this morning? I can't complain, Zach. You know, a lot of conference games this week. That's when the college football season really starts heating up. I'm ready for some action. Kind I mean, the best up. game of the year, all, arguably, is always Georgia versus Alabama. And working in that in week five this year, I mean, you can't get a better matchup than that at this point in the season. So let's not wait any longer then, and let's get to it. We are going to go ahead and start our Saturday coverage. About an hour north of here, the Orange are looking to bounce back from last week's last-second loss to Stanford. Kevin, what have you heard? What is the mood this morning at the Dome? Can Q's bounce back today against Holy Cross? Yeah, Zach, like you said, Syracuse football just seconds away from a 3-0 start after a late field goal by Stanford, put one in the losing column for the Orange. Today, they take on the FCS's Holy Cross, and this one has all the right ingredients for a get-right game. The Orange at home in front of a crowd that's been sold out for weeks. They're playing an opponent who is not quite on their level, and despite a few mistakes last week, the passing game looks solid. The schedule gets a little tougher after today's game as they take on undefeated UNLV and then a slew of conference opponents. So the Orange will not just want to win, but win big. Head coach Fran Brown is not counting out the Holy Cross Crusaders, despite the Orange being 30-point favorites. Uh, go through the past and the history of Syracuse and Holy Cross. Uh, they've had our number a few times, so it'll be an exciting football game. Can't wait to be able to play against these guys. I think they got a really good quarterback. Uh, they have a couple good receivers. I know their star running back went down. Sorry, you got a season in the injury, but he was having a heck of a year. And some keys to the game for the Orange this afternoon. Number one, take care of the football. Kyle McCord did have over 300 passing yards last week. The two interceptions, including one that was returned for a costly touchdown. The Orange needs to limit turnovers today to stay in the driver's seat. Number two, Remember what works, and what's been working for the Orange has been the McCord to Trevor Pena connection. It was Pena's first game without a touchdown last week, but he still finished with 10 grabs for over 100 yards. The Orange need to feed the hot hand. Number three, play conservative. A gutsy play call on defense at the end of last week's game may have been what cost Syracuse. They sent tons of pressure on a fourth and long that would have sealed the win. Coach Brown needs to trust his gut, and know a simple call can go a long way. Look at you breaking down some defense and giving Coach uh, some pointers for today. So we're going to give you some pointers right now on who we like and what our picks are for this game. And when we get into Penn State in just a minute, we'll get that. Plus, we have all the picks at the end of uh, this show. But right now, Holy Cross Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse minus 37 and a half. And usually that is a lot of points, especially just for one team to put up. But... Fran Brown needs to respond. Fran Brown needs to get this team and send a message and say, hey, we got an FCS coming in off of a tough loss doesn't mean anything. We're going to go. We're going to put the pedal to the metal. I like them to cover today. I'm going to take Syracuse because I don't think Brand Fran's going to take the starters out. I think he's going to try to say, like, we got to, we got to, this is a statement game. Yeah, I got to agree with you, Zach. I got to take Syracuse here. And the deal is a lot of these Holy Cross players will never play in a stadium as loud as the Dome. You guys have been to the Dome before. It gets loud. I was at the Stanford game last week. I can trust you. It was loud. This is a sold-out game at the Dome. It's going to be loud. They're going to want to bring the energy. we got to take Cuse here. Nice little mic drop there that you were at the game as well. And i got to go with Cuse as well. I mean, McCord's been on a tear. 330 passing yards every single game this year. The running game wasn't great last week. Allen was held to 25 yards on eight carries. But Cuse had 70 penalties as well. If they can really clean that up, I mean... I've seen Holy Cross play uh, Syracuse in the Dome. They're games you leave in the third quarter. They, they're blowout games usually. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And make sure you head on over to the WBNG12 website where we'll have these picks plus all of the rest of them coming up. But we move on. Penn State continues Big Ten play as well this evening, playing in its first scheduled night game of the 2024 campaign. Scheduled because, again, you know, that West Virginia was a little bit of a delay. Uh, Nittany Lions playing host to the Illini. Kyle. 
aside from a small blip against Bowling Green. The Penn State offense has been electric. Can they keep it up for another game tonight in Happy Valley? Yeah, and Penn State begins their conference play down in Happy Valley tonight at 7.30 as they host the Illinois Fighting Illini. Penn State blew out Kent State last week in a 56-0 shutout despite their score. There were some concerns when it came to the Nitty Lions. Penn State head coach James Franklin mentioned before last week's game the team needed to be more disciplined at the line and limit penalties. But Penn State picked up 65 yards of penalties on seven calls against Kent State. On the flip side, the Illini took only three penalties against the 22-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers last week. Illinois is off to a hot start this season, currently sitting at 19th in the nation with a 4-0 record. Penn State is at 3-0 after a bye week two weeks ago and are looking to really lock in with conference play starting this weekend. Penn State head coach James Franklin says they've been preparing for tonight's crowd noise throughout the week leading up to tonight's game. Yeah, that's why uh, yesterday and today we had the defense in here with the crowd noise going. Uh, and obviously we have cleaned some things up. Uh, as well and just kind of how we're operating and how dependent we are on the headset communication and how much we're not you know using the headset communication kind of working through some of the kinks but I thought last week you know was excellent but there's still there's still the fact that you're dealing with the noise on defense not only is it challenging for their offense and also if you're not prepared for it it creates some issues for you too. And the keys to the game for Penn State tonight will come down to these three things. First, Penn State has to avoid taking penalties before and after the play. As mentioned earlier, 65 yards of penalties last game, and you can't do this in conference play, let alone against a ranked opponent. Second, Penn State needs to get the play action rolling early. Illinois runs a heavy man coverage, so throwing them off with play actions and allowing Aller to find his receivers downfield will get them off to a hot start tonight and hopefully on the board. And lastly, they need to force three and outs on defense and drain the Illinois defense. The Illinois, the Illinois defense has been pretty solid year after year, so if Penn State can exhaust them early on, shutting down the Illinois offense, that will help Aller's offense thrive in this game. Absolutely. And, I mean, Aller has been thriving all season long. It, it's an aspect of Penn State's offense that we haven't seen over the last few years um, from Hackenberg to any of the big-name quarterbacks that they brought in. They just haven't really pushed the ball downfield like they are this year. And you talk about the man coverage. You talk about um, tiring out that defense. They don't have the athletes. I, it's a Big Ten team. Yeah, I understand that. But I don't think that the Illini have the athletes for four quarters to keep up with Penn State. This one's going to be real close for most of the game. But fourth quarter, I like them to pull ahead, maybe win by 20, 21, uh, 24 points. It's going to be a late backdoor cover, but I think Penn State does get it. Yeah, I do think Penn State does win this football game. However, we talk about this Illinois defense. It's a unit that year after year is going to play. NFL players drafted from this Illinois defense every year. I just think this spread may be a little too big. I can see Penn State winning by two touchdowns, winning by 14, but I don't think they'll cover in this one. And Zach, I mean, you pretty much took the words right out of my mouth. This is going to be a late game cover for when it comes to the spread. I mean, Penn State, they have been good on offense. Illinois is going to come out. They're going to stop them a couple times right off the bat of the game. But like I mentioned, three and outs are what is going to be the huge win, winning factor for Penn State. If they can go out, really just keep that Illinois defense on the field, like you mentioned, they're going to get tired out. They're going to start slipping up and making those crucial mistakes. Well, three and out is certainly what we are not doing here. In fact, we are going to be right back for another first down. So don't go anywhere because 12 Sports will continue to be everywhere after this break. We go live just in a few moments to the Cornell campus as Big Red is just moments away from kicking off the quad walk and the rest of its homecoming festivities. Your Southern Tier kickoff show, back in just a matter of moments.